Hi guys, and welcome back. And today we'll get on with making a new diorama base. So as usual, I'm just using the wooden moulding, which is Tasmanian... And when I started cutting the frame, I had about 50 mil surplus, about two inches, and just squeezed it in. So normally I might use something like uh, white glue or wood glue, but on this occasion I decided I was a bit impatient and I just thought I'd give super glue a try because there's lots of other glues that come in later on that I thought would keep the frame pretty rigid and that all seemed to work quite well. And then just using a pipette or dropper to whack some accelerator on, some kicker, and then using the airbrush to help dry that up quickly. So just to mix it up this time, I thought I'd use foam core, which I think will give me a cleaner cut and prove to be the case, much snugger fit. And in fact, that was a really nice pressure fit once I'd finished cutting and whacked it in. And just glued that in with some CA glue. And upgraded my kicker to a spray bottle, no more dropper. So I'm just using some offcuts that I had of the insulation foam. I think it's the XPF Builders foam. Behaves very nicely and cuts without making a mess. And that fitted in very nicely, but I need a little bit more height, so I'll end up whacking another piece on top of that. So time now to create the sides to protect the additional height of the foam. And I'm just using some two mil birch wood here and just cutting that with my Tamiya miter saw which is fantastic for giving nice straight smooth cuts so just assembling all the birch pieces now so I didn't have one single piece long enough to do the front so I'll join those together and then the little name plaque will hide the join anyway and then just pieces down the side and as you can see, I've sort of roughed out what the um, diorama will look like on the top of the foam with my black marker. And then I just basically pegged everything to keep it pressed flush against uh, the required surfaces and put some weight on the foam and a truckload of white glue to leave it set overnight. So time to get the stain on, and before doing that, just need to prepare the wood. So just successive passes with ever finer sandpaper. So this is pretty obvious. You can see what's going on, and the wood staining bit is also obvious. Paint it on and rub it on and, uh, and then rub it off and uh, rinse and repeat. So a bit of music, watch this, and I'll come back in a tick.
And once that was all dry, took it outside and just use a spray rattle can of high gloss from the hardware shop. Very cheap, very effective. Next up was just to put the green self-adhesive felt on the bottom. And again, that needs two pieces. Have to be careful with this that you don't stretch it because then it goes all out of shape. And the other thing that I didn't realize, this was a different brand, was it was uber sticky. So it got on the side where I'd done just done the varnishing. And uh, that took a, quite a bit of cleaning up with um, detergent to get the, the stickiness off. So... I don't know if I'll buy this brand again, but uh, it all worked out in the finish, but just a bit annoying getting it all together and it was just sticking to everything. It stuck to me at one stage, so I nearly couldn't get it off. And again, nothing revolutionary here for one of my dio bases, just using the DAS clay to build up the groundwork on both sides of the road. And then I use this scrunched up ball of tinfoil to start putting some texture into the clay. And I was really happy with the way that came out. Really random earth patterns. Just using my neat and handy airbrush to get some basic colours down on the clay. And it's really only there to protect from any white clay showing through after the next stage when I sprinkle on the dirt. So I'm making up my own version of bitumen here, which is just fine ballast and medium ballast added together with a good glug of water and an even better glug of white glue. And then black paint to taste, and I keep adding a little bit as we go until we get close to the right colour. So you just really got to mix it in thoroughly, and this wasn't a big enough container, so you'll see we swap to a bigger container and start getting some actual progress here. So again, there's nothing special here. We just trail it on and smooth it off. So a bit of music for your entertainment. Back in about a minute and a half. And then just to break it up a little bit, I thought I'd put a few potholes in with my pointy file, I think.
And all I'm really doing here is just using a bunch of pestles. So brushing them on and then air brushing them off so that gets most of the residue off. And just playing around. I mean, this is just purely to taste and how you see bitumen in your world and how I try to sort of replicate what I could see in pictures uh, that I'm basing this on. So there's no right or wrong. Um, it's just whatever you like and mixing in the colours and blending them in until you get something that's you know, relatively close and that you're happy with. Eventually you land on something that's pretty close to what you want and then uh, you can move on. <laughs> So the trees I'm trying to replicate here are pretty specific in the photo. They look quite you know, sort of distinct to the area. And I have a lovely tree in the backyard, or bush, not tree, that has some, uh, it's a dead tree, and I'm maintaining its deadness uh, because it's very useful for dioramas. So uh, some very flimsy little branches which I could combine together and just join with a little bit of wire to keep them all together, and then just a bunch of super glue on top of all that to make sure they come apart. And then I've fallen in love with this timber wood filler, which is really easy to work with and it's super, super cheap. I mean, got it from the hardware shop for a couple of dollars. It's, it's really good and dries quite hard and you can file it and drill into it and do all sorts of stuff. You can use it as it gets a little bit drier. You can put texture into it and, um, yeah, I'd thoroughly recommend it. You don't necessarily have to buy very expensive modeling compounds to get, you know, reasonably good results. So fixing them into the base now and just using some more of that wood filler to fix them securely in place and build up a little bit of a, a, a base that looks a bit realistic. Now you'll see I actually managed to paint these um, and lose all the footage of me doing that. I don't know how I did that. That was particularly clever of me. So um, they magically got painted in between putting the uh, putty on and uh, putting them into the base. So this literally doesn't get any easier than this. White glue down and spread across. And then sieved dirt from my backyard. Whack it on with a fair degree of generosity. Doing this outside, of course, because it is messy. And because it's cheap, you can just wave it off in the air and not have to worry about salvaging any of your expensive ground materials. And you've got a pretty good ground cover there. Just sealing everything in now with a matte clear varnish. So I argued with myself back and forwards for a few days whether I would have snow or not and I compromised by deciding I would have melted snow which is otherwise known as water. So using the clear two-part epoxy resin and just putting a little bit of colour into that so it's not crystal clear water and mixing the two parts together. This is a much more generous cure time than some of the other ones that I use which can go off in the pot this takes ages to cure actually and just sprinkling in some debris as well so that when it pours there'll be bits and pieces throughout and then pouring it as a very thin drizzle 
so as uh, hopefully to avoid excessive air bubblage and just sort of keeping a bit of control over exactly how much is going because I didn't want well I wanted the front side to be a little bit but I wanted the rear side to be much more because it's a downhill slope so the water should all be on the back end of it I would imagine so just using a toothpick just to break the surface tension around the edges otherwise it sort of gives you a bit of a creep up effect that doesn't look very realistic and into the last section now before the final reveal so this is just putting a little bit of leaf scatter so this again has come from the garden this is the dead leaves of a tree which i think is called castlewell and gold it's sort of like a fir tree so i stripped them off and then scrunched them through a metal sieve and it sort of shaves them down even a little bit more and uh, yeah it, it looks um it looks quite authentic so just scattering that around the main premise is most of the leaves under the tree near to the tree and then a little bit scattered further along and then securing it all with some diluted pva glue and a little bit of dishwashing detergent just to again stop the surface tension although from the foaming that we can see in the cup, I may have gone a little heavy with the dishwashing solution. Anyway, that's about it. We'll come back with the final reveal, and then I'll come back and say goodbye. And that's it. So we'll do a couple of laps of the magic spinning wheel and then come back with some still photos. But this is the base completed now for the next diorama. The next thing you'll see will be the figures for this diorama. And I think there's about five or six of them. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. So they should come out pretty soon. So sit back, enjoy. And I will come back to say so long at the end. And I wonder if anyone can guess where this is going to be set. Comment down below. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully maybe even got a couple of little hints or tips out of it. Certainly, I, I love doing the dio bases. I enjoy the woodwork side of it as well as the design of the actual diorama base. So thanks for taking the time to watch. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share if you're that way inclined. And of course, as you all know, look forward to reading your comments. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in the next one.